All right guys, welcome to another math tutorial video. This one over the topic of area and perimeter of irregular polygons. Now, previously we had defined irregular polygons essentially as any given polygon whose uh, sides and angles aren't all equal, right? Because a regular polygon is like a square, an equilateral triangle. This shape that I have before you is a, technically a hexagon. But we don't generally look at this as what we think of when we hear the word hexagon. So that makes it irregular because all of those sides are different lengths. Now this is a real simple lesson and one that I'm sure almost everybody could go ahead and solve without me talking about it. But it's a nice little uh, intro activity to area and perimeter and volume and things like that for my students. Kind of gets them in the mindset and gets them thinking outside the box. Uh, so what we want to do is we find, want to find the area and perimeter. We'll start with perimeter first, of course. That's almost always the easiest, right? And perimeter is all of these sides added together. I always thought of it the way it was taught to me. is kind of like if you had this shape and you were building a fence around it, right? How much fence would you need? Now, we have 4 inches, 7 inches, 6 inches, 2 inches. But unfortunately, we have two sides here whose lengths are missing, right? So we got to figure those out. Now this isn't too hard to figure out. If you look at this and you just kind of think about it, this side here is equal to seven inches. This side over here is equal to two inches and then we have this side here. If you were to put these two sides together, they're going to add up to that seven inches, right? I mean straight up and down seven inches. So we can take that seven inches minus the two inches and get five inches for this one. It's just kind of like a missing part of a line segment when you have two halves and you have the whole, so you just subtract what you have. Now for this one down here, we have six inches all the way across the bottom. Across the top, we have four inches here, and then we're missing those two, but yet again, not too difficult. Six inches minus four inches, that's gonna give us two inches. The sides opposite of each other, whenever I have a shape like this, I always kinda of like to think of it, just mentally make it a square or a rectangle, right? And um, just to you know, understand that the sides opposite of each other are gonna be equivalent, so we can use that information to help us find the missing ones. Anyway, perimeter, seven, plus 4, we're going to get 11, 11 plus 5, 16, 16 plus 2, 18, 20, and then 26. So our perimeter is in fact just going to be 26 inches, right? The area is a little different because, you know, there's not exactly an area formula for a weird looking shape like this, right? Uh, we don't have a formula for L-shaped hexagons. But what we do have formulas for are rectangles and uh, a little bit more regular quadrilaterals, right? So I like to split this up. So I'm going to just kind of mentally split this shape into two separate rectangles. Now if you wanted, you could have split it across this way and had a box up here and a long rectangle down here. Would have worked exactly the same. So now what we can do is find the area of each of these individually and then add them together. This one here is going to be pretty simple. Two inches by two inches. Be careful that you don't mistakenly use the wrong side length though. Uh, sometimes I see people accidentally use six inches here or something. But you have to remember that six inches represents the side all the way across and we are only looking at this small box right here. So two inches by two inches, that's gonna give us four inches squared, right? Now this box up here, yet again, you gotta be careful to use the right numbers. Seven inches, of course, is all the way down, and then we're gonna have four inches, because it's only four inches wide. So we'll multiply those together, get 28 inches squared. Now we can add our two numbers together, and we will get that the area is equal to 32 inches squared. Simple as that. These are not too difficult of problems, truthfully. Um, if you do have any questions, comments, or concerns about it, though, feel free to leave them below the video in the comments section or visit my blog, mrmathclass.blogspot.com, and I'll be more than happy to answer them or provide additional examples. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.